Well, the past several versions, InDesign has evolved from being primarily just a print layout tool to a tool that actually can lay out content regardless of media. So it really shouldn't matter if it's ink on paper or pixels on a screen. This video is going to talk about some of the new interactive design features for creating interactive documents using InDesign directly. What I want to do is start animating the content and making it interactive. Let's begin by animating this word live to come in from the top of our screen. There's several new panels that support this new feature area in InDesign CS5. There's the new animation panel, and this is where you can actually quickly animate content by using the animation presets. These are the same animation presets that are found in Flash Professional, and in fact you can actually create motion presets in Flash and import them into InDesign for use there, and vice versa. So you can actually share between InDesign and Flash users. I'm going to choose the fly-in from top motion preset, and you'll see you'll get a generic preview showing up in the animation panel to kind of give you an indication of what that animation looks like. If you take a look at the layout view, you'll see this object now has a green motion path indicating its direction of animation. And that's like any other path, you could actually grab the pen tool and edit it and turn it into a curve path if you wish to do that. Let's go ahead and preview this. In InDesign CS4, you had a limited ability to create interactive documents, but if you wanted to preview the end result, you actually had to do a full export and then preview the results in the browser. You would export as a Swift file for playback in the Flash player. And in InDesign CS5, we've made it so that you can actually preview the experience before exporting by using the new preview panel. I'm going to go ahead and do that by opening up the preview panel. And that will generate a preview of that actual content, and you'll start seeing this content animate in the preview panel. Now you'll see some of this content was already animated, and by default, each animated element uh, occurs after the previous one in a se sequential order. And then you can see that word live finally came in because it was the last thing we animated. I want to change the timing so that the elements all play together, and that live animation, that word live, actually shows up near the beginning. To do that, we go to the new timing panel where you'll see a list of all the animated objects on this particular spread. If we wanted the live headline to be first, we can just drag it up to the top in the timing list. And now if we still wanted sequential animations, that live headline would occur first. We actually are going to have these animations play together simultaneously. So we go ahead and select them in the timing panel by holding down the shift key and clicking between the first and last item. And then at the bottom of the timing panel is a play together button. Once we click that, you'll see that these items are now grouped together. Let's go ahead and preview this new version of this interactive document. Again, we'll bring up the preview panel to do so. I'm just holding down Command Shift Return or Control Shift Enter on Windows. And that will re-update and generate that preview. And now you'll see all that animated content is playing at the same time. I don't have time to show you this, but you can see that those flies are even looping animations. So they'll just play indefinitely because the loop attribute was set. Let's create a little bit more interactive content by turning the stack of images that you see here as an interactive slideshow that the user can actually click through to see from image to image. Now you only see one image on this particular layout view right now, but if I go ahead and select through that layer or those images and then take a look at the layers panel, you'll see that I indeed have five building images selected. I'm going to turn these five selected images into a new page item available in InDesign CS5 called a multi-state object. And you do that by going to the Object States panel. With all five of these images selected, I'm going to click the New button. So after I click the Create New State button in the Object States panel, you'll see that every selected image became a unique state in this single page item. It's currently called Multi-State 15. Let's go ahead and change the name of this to Building Slideshow. Now what I want to do is actually connect this multi-state object to some buttons so that when the user clicks on the button, it advances them to the next state of that image. So we'll go ahead and click on this object here. This is the next button. And we're going to go to our buttons panel and add a new button action to advance to the next state of this particular object. From the actions list, we'll choose go to next state. And once we choose that, we can choose which multi-state object we want it to go to. In this case, it's the building slideshow object that we just created in that object states panel. Let's go do the same thing for the previous button. We'll select that button in the layout, go to the buttons panel, and choose go to previous state. Again, it will automatically target the building slideshow. All right, let's go ahead and preview the results of this by using that preview panel again. Command Shift Return, Control Shift Enter on Windows. It'll rebuild that preview. That animated content will still be there. 
And now you can see I can mouse over the next button and click through to the next image in that slideshow. And I can click in the previous button as well. Again, the ability to preview that content right within InDesign in the preview panel without having to do the full export is a huge time saver. Okay, now that we've made that interactive slideshow, I want to do one more thing for this particular document. I want to add a video experience to the interactive document. So to do that, let's turn to our page where the video is located. And we'll close the preview panel. And what we have here on this page is an FLV. I've already placed it in the document. The ability to import an FLV file is now new to InDesign CS5. You've been able to import other video file formats before, like QuickTime and others. But InDesign CS5 now lets you place FLV directly as well. To set some options for this embedded video, we can actually go to the Media panel, another new panel that we can use to create interactive content. The video that came in doesn't have a poster file by now, right now. It's just using a generic poster. If I scrub the playhead in the media panel, you can actually preview the video directly without having to export. It's a nice new feature as well. And if you want, you can move the playhead to a particular frame in that video that you want to use to represent that video before it's played, typically called a poster frame. So we're going to go ahead and choose this frame from this video as the poster. From the poster pop-up menu, we'll choose from current frame. So now we have the poster that we want to represent this image. We can go ahead and set some other options. For instance, I can choose which controller, uh, UI, I want the user to be able to see to actually control the video in the final version of the document. These are very similar to the control scans that you have available in Flash Professional. And you can also turn on the checkbox here that says show the controller on rollover. So it's not underneath the video, but it's on top of the video when the user mouses over that. Rather than using the preview panel, let's go ahead and do a full export now and see the final result of this interactive document. To do that, we'll use our File Export command. And from our Format menu, we'll choose Flash Player, SWF. We'll just call us Test and save it to the desktop. When it's done exporting, it will go ahead and view this in the browser. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, pages 1 through 13, let's say, and go ahead and click OK. Make sure I got the right page numbers in there. And that will go ahead and preview and take us to the browser when the preview is done. So here's the full experience. I didn't walk you through the entire construction of this document, just a few of the pieces, but you get the idea. There's a navigation bar on the first page. If we click on the Live button, that takes us to that page where we did the animation. We can click through the little building slideshow that we created earlier. I'm going to go into this nav bar that will expand on rollover. And we can click through a different page. And we'll click one more time to the video page that we exported. And you can see when I mouse over the video and see the play controls, I'll go ahead and press play. And you can see that video is now playing inside that final experience. So there you have it. Just a very quick tour of some of the interactive options you can create now using InDesign directly and exporting the finished result as a flash file.